I have always had this curiosity. Does it make a difference if I wear a camouflage shirt or not? Today is the day that I'm gonna answer that question. What's up guys, John Osumi from Motion Shooter Photography coming at you again with another video. I got a couple great tips that I want to offer for birds. Increase the odds of you getting the shot that you want to get. And I'm going to do an experiment today. I want to see if this camouflage shirt is going to make any difference as far as the shots that I get, how close I get to the bird. Stay tuned and we'll have the answer for you and some tips coming up. Just a disclaimer, I am not a Padres fan of any kind. I just got this at a game that I went to that the Dodgers were playing at the Padres. As far as focus on my camera, I have it, my camera set at single point focus. And I'm a sport shooter, so I'm really comfortable shooting with that. And I'm always trying to make sure that I get that focus box on the bird's head if possible. It's really, really hard, especially with these small, flappy birds. That's the challenge that I like about it, and so I'm finding the tougher birds actually give me more satisfaction when I'm able to get that. I have single point focus. I try to put it in the middle of the viewfinder, um, just for the reason that I know that I'm gonna be doing a lot of cropping with these pictures, because I can't get as close to these birds as I'd like to. Really quick, I just want to talk about camera settings. I have my camera set on manual, and with manual, I wanted to have a really fast shutter speed. So um, it's kind of overcast today, so I don't have it set as high as I normally would, but for today, I'm going for 1250th of a second. That's kind of a fast shutter speed. I'm going with auto ISO, so if it's too dark or if I'm shooting into a shaded part, the ISO will kick up automatically, and so I should be in focus and it should be exposed properly with those settings. So on a trail like this, where there's trees on both sides and sometimes there's trees covering above you, your first instinct is to just kind of walk right in there and see and hope that you're gonna catch some birds or at least run into something. That very rarely happens. So what I find I have to do is I have to look way, way ahead and I'm kind of scanning the trees for movements. So you have normal movements that you would see from basically from the, from the breeze or the wind. But what you're looking for is branches that are shaking maybe a little more rapidly, or you might see a bush or a tree that has branches that are not moving and then you might see one in the middle moving. So those are the things I'm looking for way, way ahead. And I'm gonna approach it cautiously. So whether you're shooting birds in flight or if you're shooting birds that are perched, you have two different techniques for that. Birds in flight are a little more tricky because you want to make sure that you pan the camera with them and you're shooting as you're panning. And after you finish shooting, you want to continue to pan. So it's, it's kind of like sports, you want to follow through and you'll find that you'll get more of your pictures in focus that way. Birds that are perched or in a tree, you're just trying to hold steady. You want to keep your camera as steady as possible, see if you can focus on the eye if possible. I always want to get at least one eye in all of my bird photos and get that eye in focus and see if you can get the shot before he takes off. Here's a focusing tip that you might want to try to employ is if you know a bird is up in a tree but you can't quite get the shot at him and you're waiting and you're waiting and, and you get frustrated sometimes because then that bird pops his head out and you just can't find the focus while you're trying to wait for that bird to come emerge from behind the branches focus on something near where he is so you at least get the focal length set and then that way when he does pop his head out or when he does come to the perch where you can see him you might be able to get that shot that you only have half a second to get before he takes off again One 
good technique I've found is you want to approach with the sun coming behind you and you want to do that for two reasons. One is that the lighting will be favorable on the subject, the birds that you're trying to, to photograph. But also too, I think it makes you a little less noticeable because you're coming out of the glare of the sun. So when I'm walking down these paths where the sun's shining one way or the other, I try to kind of plan my route. So I'm going through the areas that I want to go through or where I think I'm going to find something with the sun at my back. All right, well back in the car and that was a good experiment to, to do today. I think I think I have to do it a few more times to really make up my mind, but today I feel like that it did make a difference to wear the camouflage shirt. And I'll tell you the reason why is yesterday I came out here and I was wearing a really bright blue shirt and I was out here for about an hour, which is about the same period of time I was out here today under similar weather conditions. And there was a point that I felt like I was going to get shut out. Like I just couldn't find the birds. I couldn't hear them. I couldn't get close to them and they were really skittish. So it just, you know, it could just be one of those things where it was a bad luck day. But then fast forward to today, uh, wearing this shirt, I was able to get the shots that I normally get, which was not anything special. But the one thing I found interesting that happened, you know, maybe two or three times, there was a, uh, the birds were coming towards me. They're jumping from branch to branch, grabbing food, jumping to branch to branch, moving closer. And they got pretty close to me before they realized I was there. And I was shooting pictures so they could hear the shutter going, but I don't think they really knew which direction the shutter sound was coming from. And I actually the good thing is you don't have to wait for me to edit my pictures you get to see them right now because I don't know if they turned out or not but the ones that I got I think I got them because they were really close so thanks for watching stay tuned for the photos and until next video this is John Osumi from Motion Shooter Photography